Yo, what's up guys? Finally, we have a second developer beta of iOS 14. And with this update, we should be seeing some more new features and changes from Apple, but also some fixes for some issues that we were having in beta one that was released just two weeks ago. Now today, we also saw releases like watchOS 7 beta 2, tvOS 14 beta 2, and macOS Big Sur beta 2. So if you are running those betas, all of those updates should be available to you today. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with iOS 14 beta 2. Let's get installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max here and check out what's new in beta 2. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to share with you guys ExpressVPN. Using ExpressVPN ensures that your internet browsing experience is 100% private so that thieves on the internet cannot track you or steal your data. ExpressVPN has been so kind as to offer all of you guys a special deal that entails three months free. So to take advantage of that offer, check the link down below. Just in case you guys don't like their services, there's always a 30 day money back guarantee. There's also a $300 Apple gift card giveaway for every 50th user that signs up. So no matter what plan that you choose, or even if you elect to get your money back, you still qualify for that giveaway. So again, check out the link down below. You definitely don't want to miss out. Okay, so we finally got iOS 14 beta 2 installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max, and let's check out some of the finer details of this build. Just to start out with, the update did take quite a bit of time, so if you guys are updating, uh, don't worry about the time, it might take a while. Um, that is uh, something that you will be dealing with with these uh, kind of like earlier beta versions of iOS 14. But let's go ahead and hop in to some of the finer details of iOS 14 beta 2. Okay, so this is iOS 14 beta 2, and let's go ahead and check out the settings app. Um, I got this really weird update payment information uh, kind of uh, toggle here, and I can't even click on it. Um, I'm not sure why that is. It just popped up when I updated, so that might be just a slight bug here in beta 2, but it's not really affecting any app purchases or anything like that, so I'm guessing this is just a bug. But let's go ahead into uh, general and then about here. And if we take a look at our software version, obviously that's iOS 14. And we do have a new build number that's 18A5319I. Now that little I does indicate that this is going to be less stable uh, than normal. So uh, your mileage may vary with this update, but so far um, it's been quite stable in just using it for the past hour and 15 minutes. Now, if we go down into this menu here, we do have a new modem firmware, and that modem firmware for me on my iPhone 11 Pro Max is 1.50.17. Now, the total update size was just around 831 megabytes um, for my iPhone 11 Pro Max. The update did take quite a while to install, um, but it did install, I think, within like 20 to 25 minutes, so um, that's not the longest uh, for sure. Um, but we do have some pretty big information here in regards to iPhone storage. Storage. Now, if you uh, downloaded the beta and you were using it previously, um, the beta was using quite a bit of storage in uh, the other. Uh, so in the other category, previously for me was over 30 gigabytes. That has improved now to 29.98, but it looks like this bug is definitely not fixed from Apple. And this is actually eating up a lot of space on people's devices. So hopefully this is fixed in beta three, um, but it is going to be quite some time until that fix comes because that will be probably in another two weeks. Um, but yeah, 29.98 gigabytes in my other category. And um, there's really no explanation for it here if you go and look at the other, um, there's really no explanation just because um, the memory is uh, primarily that I'm using is in photos and everything like that, um, music, all that kind of stuff, apps. But um, yeah, no really, exp no real explanation for the other category so far here in the iOS 14 betas. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out our first feature here. If we go down to accessibility and then to touch and then all the way down to back tap. If you go into this menu, you now have more options in regards to back tap. So um, there's quite a few options here. Back tap does seem to be working quite well. So we'll have to see exactly how this feature plays out. But so far it's a very good feature and Apple is adding uh, kind of customization options for this back tap feature. Now let's check out something else in the settings menu. If you go into um, the battery menu and then go down to uh, battery health, 
Um, my battery health has updated. It was at 98% and it's gone down to 97 just after this update. And I do keep a close eye on this just because um, I want to notify people whenever there are recalculations. So in beta two here of iOS 14, it looks like there was a recalculation and I'm down to 97% in uh, my battery health capacity, maximum capacity uh, for my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So if that goes down on this update for you guys, don't be alarmed. It's just a simple recalculation. Now, if you go into the privacy menu and you see the tracking feature, um, it will ask you allow apps to request a track. Um, that's actually been there. It's just a feature that we didn't go over in beta one, but this is actually a very useful feature and you want to make sure this is absolutely turned on um, just so you at least get that request when apps want to track you. Um, I do recommend turning that on in the privacy menu. Now let's go into uh, some other menus here. If we go down to the phone menu, and as you can see in the phone menu, we have the options for incoming calls and announcing calls. So uh, for incoming calls here, um, we can have a selection of what we want to show. Some people do like the full screen incoming calls. I personally don't, I like the banner up near the top, but you can actually go ahead and select that. Now this option is also available in FaceTime as well. So just in case you want that full screen for FaceTime and maybe you do want the banner for the phone calls, you ha now have the option to go ahead and change that. So uh, do be aware that this is a setting you can change just in case you like those full screen calls coming through. Now, something I also noticed, if you go into the camera menu, uh, do be aware that this menu did reset for me. So when I went to record video, it was uh, selected at like 1080 30, and previously I had it at 4K 60. So um, do be aware that this will change when you update. So always go into your camera settings and just kind of um, check to see what's going on in here because the defaults will go ahead and change. If we go into formats, we don't see anything new with formats. I was expecting to see H.266, but it looks like Apple is going to hold off on that, uh, at least for now. Um, so nothing new there, but there is some further options down here at the bottom of this menu for the camera app. So you might want to go ahead and check out those new uh, kind of controls for the camera section here in the settings app. Now, if we go into the widgets, um, if you go ahead and check out the battery widgets, there's actually new animations here. So um, when a battery is completely full, um, these bars actually overlap. Um, so it's actually a really interesting uh, kind of change here. So they will overlap and they will show that icon as well. So it's just a simple animation change or a simple graphic change, nothing too major going on here. Now you might see something new here that is within the stocks app for widgets. So if we go ahead and edit the widgets um, and we go ahead and add a widget here, um, if we go down into stocks, you now have the option to just track one symbol. So I have Tesla here, or you can go to your top three watch list. Um, you also have the other options that were there before, but the newest option is just tracking one symbol and you can have, of course, add that widget anywhere. Now you might have also seen that we have a new files widget here as well. So you can select from two options here to basically have quick access to your files directly from widgets or a smart stack, whatever you may need. Now, one other change that I really wanted to highlight specifically in this menu when you swipe to uh, the right here over to the farthest page on the left is that these widgets at the bottom, as you can see, I have the Tesla widget here that is now uniform with the rest of the widgets. Before it was a little bit wider and it looks like Apple has constrained um, the kind of parameters of this menu to basically constrain all widgets, even if they aren't like iOS 14 compatible to the correct size. So um, just a little change here in iOS 14 beta two for those. Now let's switch over to the weather widget. Um, this was actually causing a lot of issues. Um, it no longer has that problem where it was showing the weather for Cupertino. So that bug is now solved. And then also there's more consistent updates for the actual weather going on. So I'm not exactly sure uh, what the increments are for those updates, but it looks like it is updating uh, quite regularly, maybe every 10 to 15 minutes. And the accurate, the weather is accurate when you go ahead and tap on that weather uh, widget and 
actually see the weather in the weather app. So that was something I was complaining about in beta one, and it looks like that is now fixed here in beta two. Now in beta two, we also have some new icons here. So if you take a look at the calendar icon, that is now a brand new icon. I personally love the look of this icon. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like it or not. Um, I hope that uh, kind of like all the icons kind of switch over to that uh, very simplistic but bold design. And we also have a new icon that kind of represents that as well. It's the clock app. So the individual hands on the clock app has gotten uh, just a little bit bigger here in iOS 14 beta two, a very subtle change, but it is very noticeable and it's easier to tell time uh, when you need to tell time just directly from the app, because of course you can do that. It updates live on the app face there. Uh, now, one other change that we saw is if you connect a pair of AirPods Pro to your uh, device here, this is a change we saw in beta one, you will now have the option to see the AirPods Pro icon there for share audio. So they've added that icon. It wasn't previously available in iOS 13 or 13 betas, and now it is available in iOS 14 betas. Of course, that feature was available in beta one. I just wanted to kind of update you guys that that feature is now there. Now, when you go into the control center and you go to the home app here, um, everything is uh, well constrained. So this was kind of wonky in beta one, but it looks like Apple has fixed that uh, to kind of constrain everything into the proper size and it looks like this is a lot more uniform than what it was in beta one. Also, there was that issue in beta one where you kind of had to swipe around to uh, go ahead and access um, the touch and everything like that to open up these menus. Um, it was just a simple bug and it looks like that is now fixed here in beta two. Um, that was actually really annoying, uh, but yeah, looks like it's fixed here in beta two and you should no longer have that issue. Now, one thing that we notice is that there's a new location services is off uh, kind of icon here, wherever you may be, like whatever app you are in, if you have location services off, there's that new icon there that will alert you if location services is off. If you go ahead and tap on that, it will basically prompt you to turn it back on via the settings app, but that's just a new icon located here in iOS 14. Now we've also noticed in the Siri suggestions menu that we do have handoff suggestions. I've never actually seen this before in the new Siri suggestions. It didn't seem to be present in beta one, um, but now in beta two, I can go ahead and continue uh, different tabs that I have open and everything like that uh, from my other devices like my iMac Pro. I can now do that on my iPhone. So Siri is uh, intelligently suggesting um, that I can continue what I'm working on on an iMac or MacBook um, on my iPad or iPhone. Now, when you go into the weather app and you go all the way to the bottom, I can't really demonstrate this for you just for privacy reasons, but if you go all the way to the bottom, it will show you exactly what street you're on uh, for your location. I'm not exactly sure why Apple has added this. It will show you what <laughs> exact street you're on. I'm not sure exactly why it would need to show you the exact street. I I would assume that the uh, kind of like city is enough, um, but it looks like Apple has added that at the bottom of this menu. So if you install beta two, just take a look at that. Uh, just for privacy reasons, I'm not going to show you that um, at the bottom of the weather app. Now, when you go into Memoji stickers and like iMessage or any other apps, um, it looks like Memoji stickers has been expanded here. So Apple has added some new ones. Um, these look pretty awesome. And it looks like um, Memoji itself is getting some additions as well. So definitely check out Memoji in beta one. We saw a ton of changes. And now with Memoji stickers, we're seeing some added ones. So it looks like you can really have a lot of fun with Memoji animations and also Memoji stickers in iMessage and everything like that. So definitely check out uh, these added features in iOS 14. Um, these are definitely some highlights uh, for this new update. You just have a little bit more character with your Animoji and Memoji characters. Now, when you go into the health app and you search for hand washing, uh, you will see like no data hand washing there, but you can actually activate this on your Apple Watch. So your Apple Watch will just listen for water and basically um, you can go ahead and um, start hand washing. You can actually enable this in the health app. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that and it will set a timer there and that is now enabled on my Apple Watch. So whenever I'm washing my hands, I can go ahead and activate that and that will record my hand washing activity directly to the health app. 
Now when you go into Safari and you go to the top left hand corner here and you tap and hold on this menu, um, you can go ahead and get the privacy report and this menu now actually works. It wasn't working in beta one, but now you can go ahead and see exactly what is tracking you. You can see the trackers and the websites and get all of the data for your privacy on the internet. So this is now working and it's a huge privacy push from Apple. So definitely check it out if you go ahead and install beta two onto your personal device. Okay, so those were some of the major changes and new features in beta two. Let's go over performance because there's a lot to talk about there. Now in beta one, we actually saw some really good performance numbers in both the CPU and GPU tests that we ran in multiple apps. They were actually 15% higher scores than what we saw in iOS 13.6 betas. So that was a really great start to the iOS 14 betas. Now moving on to beta two here, and we actually see even better numbers. Looking at beta one versus beta two, we see a solid 5% increase overall between the single core and multi-core performance on the CPU side of things. And when we look at the GPU side, we see an even bigger jump. The GPU saw a huge 10% jump in performance between these two betas, and that's quite clear to the eye when you go about using iOS 14 beta 2 UI. Everything is super smooth, the responsiveness of the apps are really great, and overall you don't see some of the lags and stutters that were very present in beta 1. Now, one of the biggest issues I had with beta one was battery life. It wasn't at all terrible, but there was a noticeable difference between iOS 13 and iOS 14 in regards to battery life on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. With beta two here running just a simple battery life test, we see some really increased performance on the battery side of things, which should yield better overall battery life moving forward. The total amount is about 7%, so I'll definitely update you guys if this falls in line uh, with what we saw in iOS 13 because we actually had some really good numbers towards the end of the iOS 13 lifecycle there, so I'll definitely update you guys on if battery life kind of returns to normal. Okay, so that was iOS 14 beta two. Of course, if you have any questions about today's update, please leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to hop onto the betas, also check the link down below on how to install iOS 14 onto your personal device. As I said in my review of beta one, I think the betas right now are quite stable, so I wouldn't tell people not to hop onto them. Just be aware that things could change and your mileage may vary in your experience with developer betas this early on in the beta process. Now, as I said before, there are updates for macOS Big Sur, tvOS, watchOS, and iPadOS. So if you're running those betas on your devices, there should be updates for you all to check out along with this iOS 14 beta 2. Anyways, guys, if you liked today's video, make sure to hit that like button, get subscribed, and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date on our latest content. Also check out channel memberships. Those are now live and active and include a ton of perks moving forward as we continue on this iOS 14 content. So with that said, guys, thank you all for watching today's update, and hopefully I'll be seeing you all in some future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.